Hi. In this video, I'd like to go through some of the basic characteristics of faults so that we can identify them, describe them, and crucially, work out the type of stress that created them. If we start by thinking what a fault is, this short video shows us a representation of a fault moving. A fault is a break in the rock along which there's been movement, created by some kind of crustal stress. When a rock is broken and moved, it can create a structure perhaps that looks a little like this block diagram. Now, a fault has several different components, several different parts that we as geologists, of course, have names for. Let's go through what these uh, components are because it's essential to do that before we start looking at the different types. The first term we need to think about is a fault plane. This is the, the surface along which there has been movement, the break in the rock, if you like, where there's been displacement of beds, like you can see with this red marker horizon that's been displaced on this fault. The fault then has two blocks either side of uh, the fault plane. We have what we call the foot wall, which is the block that's actually below the fault plane. If you imagine you're standing on the fault plane, where your feet would be is the foot wall. The block that's above the fault plane, so again, if you're standing on the, the fault plane, it'd be the bit that'd be uh, above you, is called the hanging wall. The relative movement of these two blocks determines the type of fault, fault we're dealing with. We can then describe these blocks either as being upthrown, if the movement of that block has moved up relative to the other one. So in this case, the foot wall block is what we describe as, as the upthrow side of the fault. <clears throat> so similarly, we'll have a downthrow side. In this particular case, the hanging wall here has downthrown. This is the one that's moved down relative to the other one. It's worth noting at this point that all this movement is relative. They could both be moving in the same direction, but at different speeds. We'd still have an upthrow and a downthrow. To get some idea of how much the fault has moved, we talk about an idea we call throw. Now, throw is the vertical displacement of the beds. So you can see in this case, we've looked at the bottom of this uh, red bed and the vertical distance from the bottom of the red bed on the down throw side to the bottom of the red bed on the up throw side is the throw. Don't measure it along the fault plane. Okay. There are different types of fault depending on the relative movement of these blocks. The first type we're going to talk about are called dip-slip faults. This is where the movement or slip of the fault is along the dip of the fault plane. In other words, we've got some vertical movement along the fault. This block diagram here shows us two faults where there's been this vertical movement. Now these faults are called normal faults. And for a normal fault, the hanging wall has been downthrown. So you can see the block in the middle there forms the hanging wall of both faults. That's moved down relative uh, to the other blocks. That makes it a normal fault. Other ways of looking at this include the fault is actually dipping towards the downthrow side of the fault. So the inclination of the fault plane points down towards the downthrow down side. And with this type of fault, the crust is extended, it's stretched a little bit. And that's because these type of faults are formed by tensional stress, pulling apart, 
the type of fault we might find, for example, at a constructive plate boundary or a divergent plate boundary. If we contrast that fault with the, the second block diagram, you'll notice this one is different. This is a type of fault we call a reverse fault. Now, a reverse fault, we see here the hanging wall, the block above the fault plane, has been upthrown. So the fault is dipping towards the upthrow side of the fault. Now, the result of this is that the crust gets shortened. And the reason for that is that this one is formed by compressional stress. The type of fault we might find as a destructive or convergent plate boundary. Okay, this is a different type of fault. You can see from the block diagram that on this type of fault, called a strike slip fault, we only have horizontal movement. So the slip or the movement of the fault is along the strike of the fault plane. This creates a very different type of fault. So our descriptions of these as up throw, down throw, hanging wall, foot wall really doesn't apply. Here we use terms uh, to describe the actual movement of the fault, the actual displacement. So in this case, as we can see on the block diagram, you can see that the block that's moved closest to the viewer is the left-hand side block. So we describe this as a sinistral fault, from the Latin for, for left-handed. If we saw a fault that had moved the other way, with the block closest to you uh, being on the right-hand side, we describe that as a dextral movement again from the Latin for right hand. These type of faults show the same, exactly the same structure either side of the fault. And they're formed by shear stress. The type of um, displacement we might get at a conservative plate margin. Okay, one of the challenging aspects of faulting is trying to understand what's going on from a geological map view. So this would be the top view on this block diagram. Here we can see the red bed uh, before any faulting occurs. If we displace the fault, we can see where we've got a, a down throw side there. The red bed there has been down thrown on the left hand side. The hanging wall has moved down, so it's a nor normal fault. This can, in very recent faults, form what we call a fault scarp, a ridge made by the fault movement. But most commonly, with ancient faults, what we see is that fault scarp having been eroded. We then see a displacement of the beds, a breaking of the beds with different rocks either side of the fault. Now, for a dip-slip fault, it's, it's a rule that the youngest rock always outcrops on the down-throw side of the fault. To work out, when you're looking at a geological map, what type of fault it is, we need to know the down-throw side. We also know, need to know which way the fault is dipping. Very often, in an exam, you'll be given that information. Look out for it. If we contrast that with a reverse fault, Again, seen here before faulting. This time, though, that hanging wall is going to get upthrown, as we can see here, forming a fault scar. And again, with erosion taking this off, we now see again different rocks either side of the fault. The younger rock, though, is still on the down throw side of the fault. And we still, to work out this as a reverse fault, need to know which way that fault is dipping.
So from all this, we can see that faulting can be a little bit technical. We do need to know the terminology. It's crucial. And we also need to think about the types of stress that create these faults. These will come up on the exam. Guaranteed to come up, if nowhere else, on the maps. So it's really important to get our heads around it. Remember to come up with your interesting question and bring it along to class. I'll see you then.